Happy Monday morning, everyone. So glad you could join me. And I am sad to say that we are in the basement of Redeemer today. I love this building. I love the people who call this building their church home. Um, but I'd rather be outside in God's creation uh, where we've been for many of these. But this is a little different change of pace. I'm here and you'll see why in just a little bit. Um, the text for today that we're going to get into is Psalm 26, especially the first three verses. Um, but we'll look at a couple other verses too, most likely. And and uh, I'm working through the Old Testament this year as my devotional routine, and I'm in the Psalms. And so this is where this came from. It caught my attention this morning, and I wanted to share it and talk a little about it with you. Um, what a joy to share devotions with each other. So Psalm 26, verse 1 through 3 says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. It's a psalm of David. Now we know some things about David. He was a man after God's own heart, but he also was most definitely a sinner. And he also was most definitely not blameless. But here are some of the words that he includes in this psalm. I have led a blameless life. Can you say that? I can't. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Can you say that? I can't. David did. Examine my heart. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind, David says. And I think a lot of us, most of our days, would say, Ah, oh, Lord, please don't test my heart. I know it will fail and fail big time. But he's, here are bold words from David. And it got me thinking, how in the world can David say these bold words? He was a sinner. He had some big sin problems in his life. Um, and so I was thinking, well, maybe it was just a good day. You know, we all have those days where we think, oh, everything's going right, and I am in right place with God and man, and, and things are going fantastic. And we get a little, little, you know, cocky, maybe a little bit uh, puffed up a little, thinking that things are going fantastic. And I find on those days, a lot of times, the Lord says, let me humble you a little bit and help you understand how close I am to you. So maybe that was a situation for David. Um, but I'm going to share something else with you today, and, and maybe this will be helpful, maybe it won't be, but um, here is where I want to go with this today. My thought is maybe this is David after he has shared his sacrifices, the sacrifices um, that he had to give for um, sin or guilt offering, and he shared that sacrifice before the Lord, lifting up as incense the sacrifice before God to atone for his sins, and he believed that God forgave him. He believed with all his heart that God said he did, he would do what he, he would do when, when we give sacrifice and we re repent and we, we lay our sins at his feet. He believed that God forgave him. And so then he went back to the palace or wherever his little writing spot was and he penned these words, um, knowing that he was clean and forgiven and his sins had been atoned for through the promises of God. That's powerful stuff. How often... Do we, forgiven sinners by the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ, hold on to our sins and say they're not, they're not forgiven? How often um, do we just hold on to them and not trust God to do what he does and forgive our sins and make us blameless? So now I want to show you what I was going to show you and why we're in this basement instead of out in God's creation. Uh, let's check this out. All right, here we are on my Bible there, Psalm 26. But I also have a few other things on this table that I want to take you through. Uh, first of all is this piece of paper. As we look at it, you can probably tell it's written in pencil. And what's that word? We all know that word really well. Sin, right? And we know that when you write in pencil, there's also a chance of forgiveness, right? If you make a mistake, you can maybe take it off and and erase it there and here we're going to erase 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 i'm not going to take the time to erase everything here but after i do some erasing and kick it away is that n totally gone totally totally uh disappeared you can still kind of make it out can you that's kind of the way i feel like we often work with sin and we say okay lord i know you forgive us but you know what it, we still feel it it's still there it still makes an imprint in our paper and what do you think is going to happen here when we think about permit marker. Is this eraser going to do anything except maybe smudge it 
I guess if I rub long enough, I'd rip through the whole paper. Um, but that sin is right there. And that is what happens when we do not lean on Jesus at all. And we try to take care of our sin on our own. We don't even make a dent. We can't even touch it. Here is where we think about, okay, God, here's the sin, but no, I don't really think I can give you all of it. I'm going to really kind of hold on to the impression it lands on me. I'm going to hold on to what it's done for me. The last one here, the reason I came down, is on this whiteboard, there's sin again. And I have whiteboards and whiteboard markers where when you wipe it, it's pretty much gone. And it looks like it's totally gone. And that's what I was looking for. As I was testing this before uh, um, you came down, we'll see, maybe um, I'll find differently. But when I wipe this one, oh, it's gonna work this time. Look at that. That's what I wanted. If I got close or further away, there is no smudge. Earlier when I was trying this out, I was left with this faint smudge, much like the eraser. But now, I must have used the right side of what I was using of the eraser here. It's gone completely and utterly, totally gone. And if you look carefully, you can see my reflection in the whiteboard. Hi, everybody. That is what forgiveness is. That is what David was experiencing. The sin is gone, utterly gone, and he stands with boldness before God, not because of his own power or what he did, but he stands in boldness because he trusts in the promises of God that God said he would be forgiven, God said his sins were atoned for, and they were. As we wrap up this devotion, I just want to share a couple other verses of this beautiful Psalm 26, um, verse 8 and verse 11. Um, I hope after this devotion, you stop and you think, what sins am I holding on to that God really, really, really wants to take from me? How can I trust God to do what he says he's going to do? This isn't about me. It's about who my God is. And my God is a God of forgiveness that can completely forgive and wipe away my sin totally and utterly. So I can stand before him and without feeling guilty or without feeling um, uh, like I am boasting or say, I am blameless, Lord. Because if we, if it makes us feel better, we can say, because of Jesus Christ. I am blameless. Test me, God, because Jesus has washed me clean. And I hope you can take um, hope and comfort in that and stand on that this week. So I just want to read you two more verses and then we'll pray. Verse 8, I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. And we have a hope and a knowledge that we will see that hope, that, that house where his glory dwells because of Jesus. And 11, but I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. And there is the, the part of the psalm where I think David is, is showing us both sides of ourselves. Um, I lead a blameless life because you atone for my sins, God. But I need that redemption. I need that mercy from you. And I trust that you'll give it to me because you keep your promises, God. Uh, as we close, um, take that promise today. Trust in it. If there's a sin you're holding on to, guilt that's weighing you down, um, pray your own prayer after we're done and just talk to your Father. He wants to forgive that. He has the power to forgive that. Let him forgive that. Let's pray. Uh, dear Jesus Christ, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for um, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that forgives our sins, um, all of them, wiping them completely, completely away. Lord, we so often want to hold on to our sins, or at least the impression or the feeling our sins give us. Um, Lord, I pray that you can take them all, um, wipe them clean, and help us move forward without guilt or fear, but free to say, I am blameless before God because of what Jesus has done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. Please do this. If you're weighed down by guilt, take time. Give it to God. He can do awesome things for you. He promises and he keeps his promise. God's blessings on your day.